Hello traders at CMC Markets. This is Trevor Neal, analyst at RG Research. I'm recording this on the morning of March the 1st. Today we're going to look at uh, equities. Not much change in the status quo here. Uh, we're also going to have a look at gold. There's a very strong seasonal picture in gold I'd like to point out to you this lack of volatility in the currency markets, particularly sterling. First, a look at the ETFs of asset classes on a relative rotation graph. This is a weekly sampling here and the status quo remains here. We've got QQQ, in other words, the NASDAQ securities further to the right and in the leading quadrant. All US constituents here, the S&P, the, even the small cap are in that sector too. Europe a little bit lagging behind but still in the leading quadrant but pointing in the uh, southwesterly uh, direction. Then interest rate bonds in the wrong area in the lagging quadrant so no interest there. Then over here furthest to the left Swinging round strongly but uh, still in the wrong place and um, the commodities and then gold here. Two. And now a look at the stock indices on RG versus the MSCI world. And we see over the furthest on the right in its, I won't say permanent place, but been recently a fixture and heading easterly still is the FANG stocks. We'll look at those in details in a second. Nikkei also a very strong heading with a strong long tail into the leading quadrant and heading in a strong northeasterly direction. The S&P, okay, it's looking good. The Nifty, losing momentum. It's still on the right-hand side of the 100 here, but it's losing some momentum. The DAX flicking round here, and I'll show you that on the DAX chart in a moment. And the FTSE, okay, it's, it's in its, um, I won't say permanent place, down, down here in the lagging quadrant, but it's potentially going to be interesting soon, I think. Now this is the uh, daily chart of the NASDAQ and um, you can see that we're still going up, yes, and higher lows, everything's good here and higher highs, but we are losing some momentum here. And uh, here you can see the MACD um, has crossed to negative and the RS RSI is, we've got lower highs in place here. So this is not as straightforward as it has been. It's losing some power, could be a toppy area, could be come approaching a time for reaction. If there is a reaction, probably down to 17,000. Too early to say that now, we're very close to all time highs, but it is finding it more difficult to go forward. So that is a warning. We saw the uh, breakout that we were expecting on the on the DAX and uh, it's now shot up since then and um, moving uh, forward very strongly. Here you see on the RSI very strong momentum, the RSI uh, pointing upwards, it's gaining power. I know it's a high reading, yes, above 90, but it's still the direction is upwards. And look at this on the MACD, the gap is widening here. So still in an upswing that is in progress at the moment, not yet ready to halt, I do not believe. I don't normally have anything nice to say about the FTSE, uh, but we've got a series, very clear series of highs around the 7,750 uh, area here. And what's become quite noticeable now is higher lows in place. Every time it pulls back, the, the bulls jump in earlier than they did before. So we've got higher lows in place here. So horizontal top, higher lows, ascending triangle, potentially an explosive move to the upside here. But the key level is to break the highest high of these series of sideways movements is 7,763. It's not looking like doing it yet, but in the longer term, I think this could become something of interest and stop being the, the hated. The Nifty, which has had an awesome run and is in fact making a new high, but warning too here, we're, that we're losing momentum. While making a new high, it's finding it harder to do it. We can see it here on the MACD with a strongly a strong pattern of lower highs in place here and the RSI too, lower highs as we make higher highs in the price here. 
this is a warning it's not a cell signal and actually this has been going on for some weeks now already but it does indicate that this move is possibly approaching an intermediate term top and that's close in terms of time uh, price it may well be uh, that we go higher first but it does seem to be struggling beginning to struggle looking mature what does look good and continues to look good and the momentum is still strong is the Nikkei. Up it goes, new 35 year highs taking place, support levels, higher support levels in place, just breaking up again today to new highs. The 50 and 200 day movie average, the gap is widening. The MACD is very positive. This is the RSI is also pointing up strongly. Any of these kind of pauses that, that you get are likely to be short lived and be swing opportunities for the bulls. This is a strong one and it seems like it has got more legs to it and it's not slowing up like some of the other ones. Now this is a magnificent seven and um, really it's very split um, here. The, it, um, this is versus the S&P incidentally. Um, so we've got Nvidia still in its um, position heading strongly northeast big long tail here so that's a very strong message indeed. Likewise with Meta Amazon, however, is um, is a little bit stalling around uh, the, the S&P, Microsoft the same, Google looking rather uh, negative actually, Apple the same and Tesla. Tesla actually is, is after, though this is showing this relative underperformance which it's got, is actually looking like it's turning up. I'll show you that in a moment. So NVIDIA, let's start with that well, as we must. Strong move here. The MACD is positive above its uh, signal line at the moment, although moving towards it as we ease back. And so there is a, a pullback here, which seems to be ending. 772, 771, 769 would be a protective area and it should be also protected by the support here. And the downtrend here on the RSI is being broken now by this upwards. Now, I don't often say this, or I haven't said it for a long time, but Tesla looks good. It has turned on a reverse head and shoulders, low, lower, low, higher, low, breaking up here. This was the breakout, return to the neckline, and then on its way up, which should take us um, on the basis of the head and shoulders alone to above uh, 220. It has broken this uh, resistance level at uh, 194. Uh, the MACD is positive here and the gap is widening like that very much. The RSI is climbing. This looks as though it's got more to go. I think around here is still a good level and protection could be at the 191 level or the 189 level down in here or maybe too far away. The right shoulder of the reverse end shoulder 182. But this looks as though it's on an upswing now and it's got more to go and it's got good momentum which can carry it forward towards the resistance which is really starts in earnest around 230. Now Netflix is pushing up higher lows, higher highs in place here, but this is one also that may be losing uh, momentum. And so watch out for this flat looking MACD there, lower highs in the RSI. So it, it is making a new high, you can't deny that. It's above 600 now, but it's finding it harder to push forward. So I think that we're somewhere, somewhat close to what could be a, a pullback. If it's very severe, it could be all the way back to 500 level here, which was the big breakout gap and maybe fill that gap, but it's struggling. The story is exactly the same with Amazon. We had a strong session yesterday. It's at a new high, um, but uh, it is losing momentum flat uh, MACD here and uh, also a little bit weighty looking uh, RSI as well. So not that an attractive buy at this break to new highs and could you know, easily come back to the 160 level, the big uh, gap breakout. So watch out, it's just a warning that these new highs look tired. Both Google and Apple both looking very heavy indeed and actually Google looking like it's about to get worse. The gap widening here on the MACD, lows being broken, the next support is at 135. Then we could be testing the 128 level. The, the momentum here is strengthening on the downside and the RSI is also very weak with lower highs in place here. This is a counter trend and holding back the Nasdaq, that tired looking Nasdaq and one of the weak constituents of the Microsoft also 
rather struggling to go up. It's, it's actually going, the MACD is negative on this consolidation and it looks as though it's going to be held by this 140, 122 high for a bit longer. It's uh, just lost momentum. Now the other exciting stock on the R RRG was along with NVIDIA was Meta and look at Meta, Meta it looks very close to breaking out to the upside again for another leg higher supported by this consolidation here and the gap from 407 up to 453. It, the MACD is negative at the moment uh, the RSI is still being pressed by this declining highs pattern. This infers that this breakout is likely to be a little bit later, not now, not right now, but uh, the pattern inside the consolidation is of higher lows, so it probably eventually is going to be. Meta might be about to do what AMD has just done. So here we had the cons consolidation here, range there, and we have just surged through it and having consolidated in this range from 165 up to 184. The MACD has crossed to the positive side and the RSI has broken its, up, its downtrend line. That's what I was talking about on Meta. And this might be what is in store uh, for it. And aggressive traders might uh, use the break of the, the declining highs in the RSI in Meta for their trading signal. But here, this one has gone, it's strong, another higher low in place. And we've, we've given the amount of momentum we've got on the upside, it's probably going to extend further on this leg and be supported at 184. Now, as I said to you, something uh, worth knowing about gold is that this is the weakest month of the year. March is the weakest month of the year. And look, it's a very strong seasonality message here. Very strong one indeed, that this is a, a weak month and the weakest month of the year. So watch out for that. And here is gold. Um, we're on an uptrend at the moment. You can see this downtrend in the MACD has turned up and the gap is widening. It's uh, steady and getting the momentum is coming in. And then we see that also in the RSI. We could uh, draw a line across these tops here now and it is broken up and it's pushing up. But remember what we've just seen in the seasonals here. It is struggling around the 2000 level. A series of highs here below 2100. It seems to find it hard to do. It probably it is not going to manage to do it in March given that strong seasonal message. Now finally a word about the currencies. The cur currencies as volatility is really low at the moment. You can normally rely on volatility from cable but here it's at a I believe it's a 35 year low in volatility. It's, it's extremely quiet. So here's the RSI is at uh, 46 at, uh, without uh, trend. The MACD is close to zero. It's ranging very tightly here. The dollar itself is drifting upwards a little bit, but the market's activity is very tight in G indeed in the currencies. And I think Bollinger Bands, if I had that on there, would be working extremely well at the moment. How long this is going to be maintained, I don't know. But I think for speculators, it's very clear where the act action lies. It's in virtually two stocks in the United States, and that's it. I thank you all very much indeed for uh, your time today. I always appreciate it uh, that you spend this um, time with me and listen here to the end. Thank you very much indeed. I wish you a great weekend if it's the beginning of the weekend for you. May the trend be with you. Goodbye.